dating after the loss of a loved one. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Self Love Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Step Five Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, this particular conversation came into my thought process because for those that haven't seen my uh, last video, uh, my mom passed away on the 26th of March, and here it is, April 5th. Um, so it's been a little over a week. And it made me think, what are some of the challenges that people, when they lose a loved one, that they have to deal with? As we know, the first thing you're going to have to deal with is getting yourself at peace with the fact that they're no longer going to be here. Um, I was talking to someone recently, and they made the comment that they look into the seat next to them in the car and realize that their partner will never, ever be in that seat again. Folks, that's that's tough. That's tough. And for those that don't know my story, um, I lost my wife. It's going on July will be seven years. Um, this was a person that I ran with for 32 years. Uh, we ran together. Um, I didn't run with the guys. I ran with my wife. Uh, we did everything together. It was one of those uh, relationships where you see one, the other one is somewhere close by. And so I'm, I'm, I'm talking as a person of experience, not a person who's talking theory, not a person who's saying what I think you should do, but how I actually dealt with it. And, and I'll share that with you. If you, and we all know, even if it's a person who's physically here, and, and you guys separate, whether it's divorce or you just uh, stop dating, a loss can be very devastating. And the answer to resolve it is going to be the same. Um, I know for some, they, they think um, that you're going to handle them differently. But the bottom line in all of this healing is first getting at peace with yourself. And that's why I'm talking about this on Self Love Monday. Because everything's going to resolve. You guys know I talk about that all the time. Everything resolves around revolves <laughs> around you and getting yourself at peace and, and answering the questions within yourself to where you like the person you see in the mirror. You have no regrets. And if you do have regrets, this is the time to sit back and have the conversation with them either sitting in front of you to the side of you and understand they're at a place of forgiveness um, whether they did wrong you did wrong and be able to actually have that conversation and get yourself at peace even if and you guys have heard people talk about writing notes you can write a note you can burn the note when you get through or you can save the note um, for some people if they are still here physically uh, you can send them a note if you feel it would help in the healing process. Not to attack, not to get revenge. I'm not that type of person that's going to teach you that. Because some people go, yeah, well, you cleanse yourself and at least you told them. I'm not into all of that. I'm into the, the bottom line is what are you going to do to get yourself at peace? And it's not about trying to hurt someone else. Because if you're in pain, you should know what it feels like. And why would you want to put that back on someone else? So, but let's get back to the losing them physically, which was the reason behind this. And that's after you get to your, yourself in a healed place where you feel like you can move forward. Um, there's no time limit. And that's really why I wanted to do this. Because some people, that's kind of the question. How, do, how long do I wait before I actually get back into the dating game? And for me, I remember I was asked this question. Uh, my mom actually asked me the question. Uh, the first week after I lost my wife, she was like, are you going to date again? And I said, yeah. And she said, uh, how long are you going to wait? And I remember this is the first week. And I told her, I said, I'm ready now if she shows up. And my mom's eyes just popped open. It was like, oh, and like in shock because she told me, she said, you can't date that fast. And I said, no, no. You couldn't date that fast, but I can. And the reason for that is just kind of what I just mentioned earlier. I have no regrets. I didn't have any then. 
and I still have no regrets. My wife even told me about, it was either the day or two days before she passed away. She said, dear, you need a helpmate and you have my blessings. Incredible lady, think about that. You know, that you're, you're about to leave this earth and you're telling your partner to go get someone else. But that's what she did, very strong lady. Um, so I didn't have that over my head where, you know, people, you know, where a lot of times for people, they have that conversation like, is it wrong for me to date again? Is it wrong for me to get married again? Um, what would the person think? You know, um, you go through all those kind of conversations, but I think my wife setting me free made it even easier where I didn't have to have that conversation. You have to be able to understand and, and which is what I did came to understand is that she got me to the point that I am, you know, as we all say, people uh, serve a time in your life. And she helped me to get to where I needed to be at that point in my life. She allowed me to recognize that I, I could take care of myself because I didn't have to go jump into a relationship. Even though I said mentally I, I, I was ready, I didn't have to jump into a relationship because I knew how to cook. I knew how to uh, clean. I knew how to wash my clothes. I knew, you know, all the things that a lot of people would be lost at weren't, weren't things for me. I, I was able to take care of me. So those weren't concerns. It was just, and I guess, again, that's another reason I was able to move forward because I wasn't sitting there like, okay, now what do you do? I don't know how to, the bills or what bills to pay. And I didn't have any of those conversations because I was the one that was, was doing all that. I was the one that um, was handling our finances. So I was still handling the finances. So you know, you guys follow me. So there wasn't for me, this, these empty in that spot. I missed her because of what she brought to, to me in a relationship, but all the outside stuff, which you guys always hear me talk about character and, and integrity are the things to look for. But all the outside stuff, which a lot of people look to as far as trying to figure out a relationship, which is, in my opinion, not the best way to go. But I could I could handle all those things. So those weren't never conversations that I had to personally go through. And for some of you, those may be the, the first things you have to do as we're getting ourselves together is you have to go and figure out how to pay the bills because you haven't had to do them. Or you're not a person that you did the cleaning as far as your own clothes or stuff like that. So that those are things, responsibilities that are put on you. And um, so that's a part of the healing process, not the dating process. But once you get yourself, again, whether you, where you're back into the dating game, the main thing, again, for this video is not to allow the world to tell you how long to wait. And that takes me back to the conversation I was having with my mom when she was saying, you can't go that, you can't date that fast because people will start to think you didn't care. And I said, well, you know me. First off, I don't live my life worried about what other people are thinking. And this is not a conversation where I tell people, get to a point in your life where you don't care what other people think. Again, that's not a conversation I, I have and it's not a conversation that I teach. And the reason I say that is because you should care what other people think. And as a human being, you always will. Even the people that try to play like, oh, I don't care. We all do. Because we all want to feel significant. We all want, all want to feel important. The key is, and what I share with people, is not get to a point where you don't care what other people think. Because, again, you have to be pretty arrogant also in order to be a person that really doesn't care what other people think. And you guys know I'm not into arrogance. Arrogance the way I define it is that arrogance is when you put yourself above other people and you start to look down on others. I don't think you should ever, ever, ever in your life be at a point that you think you're better than other people. You made di different decisions, which means you have a different lifestyle. Doesn't make you a better person. Doesn't make them better either just because they made different decisions and maybe they're doing better in you in certain areas. Um, nobody's better than the other one. Um, the bottom line is getting at peace which is what this is all about. It's getting at peace with where you are and not judging. Um, but anyway, the loss. Once you uh, get at peace, and again, <laughs> back to keep getting off target there. Um, the reason I was telling my mom and she was saying that I 
couldn't date that fast is because she was, again, was talking about how other people would view that. And like I said, the first thing is I don't worry about that. And then the second thing is there's not too many people can have a conversation with me that has been with the same person for 32 years, had a relationship that was actually working, loved being with their partner, committed to their partner, um, went through the obstacles. You know, if you guys haven't heard, we, we went through the, um, uh, what was we had homes, lost homes, bankruptcy, couldn't have kids. Um, we tried all the outside artificial stuff in order to make that a reality. Matter of fact, during that process is when they found her cancer. She fought cancer for 17 years. I lost her to that cancer. So again, we're talking about people, you know, in my particular case, a person who went through some obstacles. So again, a person not in theory. So for me, I'm saying, and she was Japanese, and so we went through, um, there were people in her family that were gonna disown her uh, just for dating me because of me being black. And so we had to overcome that obstacle also. So there's a lot of obstacles that we had to overcome, and we did that together in one relationship. Not, I, I'm not talking to you about the three marriages that I've had. Uh, that was the one, and we, we went through all the different challenges inside of that one relationship. So because of that, again, not too many people around me could tell me, first off, how to uh, feel after losing someone like that because they've never been in a relationship like that. Um, and so how can you tell me when you have no experience on, that's your, as people call your ride or die, they've not been in that position. So how do you tell me how long I should wait? And like I was telling my mom, I said, if you ask 10 different people how long you should wait, you're gonna get 10 different answers. Why? Because nobody knows. So why am I letting people who don't know tell me how long I should wait? And so I used the analogy and I shared with her and I'm gonna share that here for you, is that I said, let's say for example, I was, let's look at it from a different perspective because I know if you do it quickly, you know, you do like my mom said, people will start to wanna judge and you can't worry about that. But I said, but let's take this from a different angle. Let's say I was one of those men that the moment I lost my wife, I wanted to commit suicide. And so I took up, you know, based on the hospital, they have these different programs that you can go through to help you through the healing process. And let's say I, I went to one of those classes because I know I was, I'm right there. I'm ready to take myself out because I've just, I just can't do this. That was my world. And so while I'm attending this course, there's a young lady in there going through the exact same thing because she lost her husband. And because we can relate that we're both on the edge because of losing our partners, we talk, we having a conversation, everything is going beautiful, not because I'm trying to pick her up or she's trying to pick me up, but because of the fact is we're going through the same uh, challenge in life trying to move forward. But because we understand where each other is, is at this point in our life, we could, we could help each other through this healing process. So we decide to go to dinner, maybe a, a day or two later, to kind of help each other through this. Nothing intimate, just, you know, we're going out to help each other through the process. The moment people hear that I'm out with this young lady, immediately people are going to be, wow, he couldn't even, he, I mean, look, this is same week or two weeks later, he's already dating. He's already hanging out with other women. Obviously he didn't care, or is this someone he was already dating uh, during his marriage? And you know, I mean, think about that, folks. Isn't that what goes on? People have all these different conversations, making up different stories on what's taking place because they don't know what's really going on and trying to uh, meddle in other people's business. You know how they say, stay in your own business, take care of your own stuff. <laughs> but anyway, bottom line is, they'll sit there and they'll start to write these stories. So that relationship with this young lady could prosper into something that we could through that because we've both, because of where we were, we realized how much we have in common and it could escalate into an actual relationship. And then people would really be like, ooh, oh no, 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 no. 
he he definitely had to have been dating her because I mean here he got a whole blown relationship with this girl, um, and he you know a week after he loses his wife or whatever, and but the reality is that whole process started because we were helping each other through the healing process, and we got to know each other through that intimate relationship and the intimacy came because of the common um, uh, challenge that we were dealing with, we ended up in a relationship, okay? And my mom was like, wow, well, that could happen. I said, see? But it happened quickly. But because the circumstances is different, and then if people hear that story, they go, wow, that's that's wild that he didn't... See, that's why you can't sit back and worry about other people and them make, because they don't know. Not only that, they can't tell you how to feel. They can't tell you, um, because I'd even ask my mom, I said, how long do you think I, I should wait? And she's, if I did listen to other people and, you know, and made the decision. And she's like, I don't, I don't really know. She's like, I don't know. I mean, probably a year or two or something. See, that's my point. Nobody knows. And what are you waiting for? And this is not to take away the human element of losing your partner. But you have to get healed. Do that before you do start dating. Don't get me wrong. Now, make sure you're healed before you start dating. Because you do not want to go into the dating scene and now live in a comparison world. Which means you haven't been able to close the door. Not saying you forget about your partner. Because that's, if, you, if you had a solid relationship like, like, like I did, you're never going to forget them no matter what anyway. Because they added so much value to your life. Nor should you be trying to forget them. But when I'm saying close the door in the sense of you don't take what they did or the relationship you had with them and take those things into your next relationship. And now you start living in a comparison game um, because people have told me that, that um, well, that's that's why you haven't been dating is because women it's going to be hard for uh, women to compete with Terry. And I said, I'm not looking for someone to compete with Terry. First off, it's not fair to Terry. It's not fair to the other person. It's not fair to me because we're all different individuals. So there are going to be things that she will bring to my life, the next young lady, that Terry and I didn't do and vice versa. And But the relationships are different. And I'm having just a relationship with whoever the new person is, and we make that relationship work. You guys hear me all the time talking about comparing if you get out of the comparison business, your relationships work. And the easiest way for me to describe that is saying if you were stuck on an island and that was the only person there, that would be the greatest person in the world because you guys would work through your issues, whatever they are. Why? Because there's nobody to compare them. There are no other couples to compare them to whether it's physical or mental, because that's what you hear people, well, she's too big, she's too small. You, if you guys were on the island by yourself, those wouldn't be conversations. The only reason it's a conversation is because you're comparing them to someone else. Get out of the comparing business and watch your relationship prosper. And that's why I said for me, I'm not going to compare a new relationship to Terry. Again, it's not fair to Terry. It's not fair to the new persons. It's not fair to me. We're all different individuals. The new relationship is going to be a whole different relationship and has nothing to do with mine and Terry. So that's really kind of the, the, the ideal here that I wanted to share is that only you know if you've been able to close that door and know that you're not going to be doing comparing and that you're healthy before you go back out. And I believe that for a lot of you, even from the perspective of maybe you didn't lose them, lose a partner it's just through uh, we separated divorce or um, just stop dating and you're going through the mental anxieties and that kind of stuff it all still comes down to the same thing from that perspective is get you together first recognize if, if there are here physically why you guys aren't together and quit writing these uh, stories to make them superhuman and if you bring that back down to reality you'll realize why you guys aren't together and in a lot of cases, you'll be glad you're not together to open the door for the next person. And then for most people, it's you've had you, you've had this person when you believe that it's your ex. That's why you hear people talking about, I want to get my ex back. 
Sometimes that was the best thing that ever happened to you is the fact that you did lose them for whatever reason because you wouldn't leave the relationship. They decided to leave. Best thing for you because you would have just stayed there and, and um, been miserable, but because you were didn't want to say, didn't want to break up. So, but anyway, uh, got to rant there just a little bit. I mean, in a different direction. For those that are watching this, maybe for the lost thinking, I'm talking about divorce or separation or whatever, but it works the same in terms of getting you together first, that way you're not comparing, and then go back into the dating game. But the idea, again, behind this video is for those who lost them from a physical perspective. Get you together. Don't let anyone tell you how long you have to wait. Because in most people's case, they've never experienced it. Therefore, they have no idea about your healing process. And therefore, their advice is just giving you um, their opinions with no knowledge. So, anyway... As you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you uh, who haven't had the opportunity, run over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online, and you can see everything that I got going on. And folks, just remember, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. First, again, get you together. Then get out here and start dating again. Don't let anyone put a time limit on, how, on when that is. Only you know, but make sure you're at peace with the first relationship that of the person that lost, that you get that healing done first, and then move forward. And understand, it is what they would want you to do. Even if you guys had a strained relationship while they were here, remember today, they're in a different place. They see the world differently. They're at peace where they're at. You get there too. I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye.